All right, y'all, hope everybody is doing good today. Um, it is mid-September, past mid-September down here in Texas, and it's still 91 degrees outside. It's hot day today. Feels exceptionally hot, but I don't know what's going on with that. But anyway, I was in Costco today, and boy, let me tell y'all, that alone is a rat race down here in the suburb of Houston where I live. I mean, it's such a crowded store. Oh my gosh, people in and out. But with that said, those people at Costco are pretty good about getting you checked out and getting you out of the store. They run you through there like cattle, to put it simply. That's the way my late mama would have said they run you through there like cattle. But I spotted this. This is a Leatherman Bolster, which was a new name for me. And upon further research when I got home, it appears that this is a Leatherman exclusive for Costco, that they partnered up or something and came out with their own exclusive line or model, which is not unusual with uh, warehouse stores, big box stores like Walmart, places like that. It's not unusual for some people to have a, a dedicated product or product line for those goods. But they are selling these at Costco for $39 right now. And again, this is September of 2022. If you don't have them at your Costco near you, you can go online and buy them from Costco for $44.99. $5 shipping, I think is what it is. And at first glance, um, looks like a pretty good deal. But that's what we're going to do today is take a closer look at this. And I'm going to do uh, you know some slow pans on the packaging here. And I know y'all, hey, you know what? I get comments all the time. Hey, this guy talks too much and stuff like that. You know, I, I appreciate your patience to those of us who actually listen to all my rambling and watch through my videos. I think there's might be three of you. But uh, let's see, 420HC, which, you know, 420's been around a lot of years. It's the steel that's used in the Buck 110, and I have no problems with it. I think it has pretty decent edge retention. And most importantly, it's easier to get an edge on than some of these new fancy steels. But y'all know, if you've watched my previous videos, that normally I'll EDC a free P4, the Leatherman Free P4, which is one of the newer ones. Uh, and I love it. It's a great, it's a great tool. But here's the problem on that free P4. It's about eight or nine ounces, I think. And it's heavy throughout the course of the day. I mean, y'all have seen my videos. You know I'm a pretty big fat guy. Uh, I belt carry. And uh, yeah, when you get that much weight, when your pants alone want to fall off you because you don't have no ass to keep them on, um, it becomes a problem sometimes. And so that's why I've been kind of looking for a lighter Leatherman. I know I'm going to sacrifice uh, two great utilities, actually, the saw and the scissors by moving to this. But it might be a pretty good compromise to at least keep the basic Leatherman tools. And as you can see, this is still, even though it's $39 at Costco, still made in USA, if that matters to y'all. Now, it says U.S. and global parts, so they very well could contract out the handles or the blades or something else to China or Taiwan or wherever and then put them together on this. And when they do that, they do not have to disclose the country of origin of those parts because they're taking those pieces and put them together into the final unit here stateside. So that's the law. But this is what the packaging looks like, so let me go off camera and take this out, and we'll take a look. Don't you all love this bomb-proof packaging that some of the warehouse clubs and people at places like that lose? I mean, this packaging has no way to open it, no easy pull tabs or anything like that or perforations. You pretty much just have to start cutting and tearing to get it out of there. But there's a reason behind that. You know, when something goes in the warehouse club, it has to be in these big cards where it's harder to hide, and then it has to be put out in PDQ display trays, which are the trays that hold these things in spot, to where basically the consumer can shop it, and then they throw away the tray and the pallet and everything when they're done. So it makes it real quick for the Costco employees to put it out in display, which in turn means cheaper pricing to you, the, uh, the customer. Okay, we are out of the packaging. It looks like it's just basically the items in the package. I don't think there's any information in between these two pieces of cardboard, so we'll just uh, set this to the side and take a closer look. Let's look at this sheath first. Um, this looks basically on par with the typical Leatherman sheaths we've been seeing for the last few years. You know, they started putting these on. Well, my free P4 came with a gray sheath like this, and then I switched to a leather aftermarket sheath, but... I do like that they use um, 
this type of snap, like the old military uh, pass-through snaps or whatever you call them. Uh, that's a nice little touch. But as you can see, they do have the sheath subcontracted out to China. And that's okay. You know, helps bring nice, affordable stuff like this to uh, to people like me that, you know, just don't have a ton of money to go out and buy on these toys. And the sheath has got a little elastic piece in here, which is nice, actually. I like that. And really, this is a better quality sheath than the one that came with my P4. It just feels like it's a better quality sheath. And what I like about these nylon sheaths, too, is that as they get frayed, little pieces of thread come off or whatever, just hit it with the lighter, remelt it, and you're good to go. Uh, plus, they don't retain the moisture like a leather sheath will sometimes. So, yeah, sheath looks pretty good. Now, here's take a look at the tool. Now, here's something that surprised me. Check this out, y'all. It's got spring-loaded pliers in it. Uh, that's the first for me that I've seen in a Leatherman. That's the first Leatherman I've ever had that has spring-loaded pliers. Uh, you know, and that I could see how that could definitely be an advantage sometimes and definitely feel awkward sometimes, probably, depending on how you're working with something. So uh, let's just take a look. Let me zoom in in here so y'all can get a better a better picture of this. Have I got my lights on? I might not have my light on. There we go. Let's get that other light on there, too. And you can see it does not have the replaceable cutters, but that's okay. And they're actually not, um, yeah, those aren't bypass cutters either. Look at that. They have a heavier cutter portion in the middle of it. See that? It's kind of odd. We'll have to check that. I think most of my other Leathermans have a, these are like diagonal cutters, really. Most of my other Leathermans, I think, are bypass colors. We'll check on the P4 here in a second when we take a look at it. You know what? Let's check right now. And see, the P4 has replaceable cutters, but as you can see, they bypass each other when it closes, right? See that? Snip. See that bottom part? Snip, snip, snip. You can cut like a nice big wire there. And then, of course, you can replace these cutter heads if you need to. These, see if I can get that. See, they just kind of come together in the middle. Like I said, like a pair of, uh, uh, we used to call them dikes, uh, side diagonal cutters, I think is what the technical term is for them. But that's kind of interesting, yeah. Now, I do like the fact that it has... Um, you know, pretty good, uh, pretty good meat up there in the teeth. Boy, it's hard to get this thing to focus on things. Come here. See that? Pretty good. And I must say that the uh, the handles, you know, being this rolled, it's stamp stainless. It looks like, and then they have it rolled at the edges. See that right there? That provides a nice, comfortable. Uh, you know, it's comfortable. No, no sharp edges or anything like that. So yeah, at first glance, the pliers look pretty good. Let's see what we got on this side and how hard they are to open. Uh, let me see here. It doesn't appear like it has a lock on it. It's got these little thumb pieces right here that you can flip up. And we've got a little serrated blade and it does have a lock on it. There it is right there, I think see here if I can figure this out oh it does not have a lock I'm sorry it's just a friction just like a, a slip joint knife see that and it just pops back over but we've got a little serrated blade which would be handy for cutting open packages like this one just came in uh, I kind of wish it had a little bit more aggressive spider co esque type serrations on it but that's not bad for for what's on there um that would be a good heavy use blade and i like that it's shorter than the main blade all right and let's see what we got next on here we have a small inch and centimeter ruler in conjunction with a file on one side and it's kind of just cut like a mill file mill bastard file and we've got a small cutout right here, which that looks to me like it would be an excellent spot for a ferro rod. 
to, to strike a ferro rod right there in that little curvature. Kind of, kind of handy. We've got a little lanyard ring, which I doubt I'll ever use that. And then we have the classic um, can opener. But Leatherman, they also put a nice heavy uh, stripper, like a wire stripper right here for it, which is a nice little plus. And you can see they actually do use a sharpened can opener. And it looks like the lip right here is not groove. You know, sometimes Lip Victorinox will put a groove on those to help it catch on the lip of the can better. But it looks like a good functional, a good functional can opener. Always a handy thing to have on you. Uh, Y'all may think I'm joking, but uh, I'm not. You know, have you ever tried to open a can without a can opener? Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, it can be done. Hell, people did it for years and years just using knives, whatever they had available. But uh, a can opener makes the process a hell of a lot easier. Excuse my language. Got a nice flat blade, flat blade screwdriver right there. And you can see they're kind enough to let you know that this is a standard head. And then the Phillips has a little Phillips marker on that. And I reckon that's so when they're pushed through right here, maybe you can see which one is up or something. Let's take a look at this Phillips. And it's just a flat, a flat Phillips type. But for the most part, when I use these, y'all, they work pretty good. They work pretty decent. Pretty nice looking Phillips. All right, let's close this up. Closes up pretty good, has pretty, there's no magnets or anything on it like the free P4, but it has pretty good retention on there just with the, the slip joint. So uh, let's take a look at the main blade. And this is in uh, 420 HC, like we discussed earlier. Typical, uh, typical nice grinds from Leatherman. Definitely a very usable edge from Leatherman. It's probably not a hair parper, but it's a, it's a good factory edge. There's actually, I'll actually run this through my strop because there's a burr on this side of it, a very slight burr, and that'll make that thing, it might make it a hair popper. And you see it has a small liner lock type lock mechanism on the main blade. That's about a, a must have in my opinion nowadays. It's, it's, it's really nice to have that lock on your main blade. And it looks like the main blade is the only one that's accessible when the unit is closed. And it's set up for a right hand tip down carry if you carry it with a pocket clip in your pocket, drops down in your pocket. How easy is it for one hand manipulation? Well, not bad, not bad. Let's see if it has any lateral play in it. No, nice and tight. And I will say that the quality of this is uh, typical Leatherman, nice quality. Um, for a $39 retail, made in USA, uh, yeah, personally, I think this is a bargain, um, especially considering, gosh, I still have my original Leatherman. It was one of the ones made in the early 90s when uh, Tim was still in the shop and everything. Uh, my, I bought it at JCPenney. I feature it in a video. I think it's called 40 Years of EDC or something along that, that lines of that. And hell, that original Leatherman, I think I paid um, 60 bucks for it or something like that. My mom bought it for me at JCPenney when I was going to college. Uh, she, she ordered that thing for me and said, hey, buddy, go down and pick this up at JCPenney. I know you've been wanting one. But yeah, I got to say, you know, it's a pretty nice little, um, pretty nice little, uh, little setup here. Um, it does have a clip on it, but I'm sure you could take that off. I'm sure they were th thoughtful enough to make that screw short enough where you can just take the clip out and then put your screw back in and, you know, make it a even smaller profile. But, uh, is it, is it as, you know, the quality as of the, of the P4? No, of course not. I mean, it's this, I mean, this is, um, this is a tool and this is a free P4. I think I have a video that I did on this pretty much ex exclusively on the P4, if I remember right. Um, 
P4 is a great rig. You know, it does come with a pocket clip, which I don't have attached, but one of the advantages of the P4 that a lot of people like is you can access all the tools while it's closed. And the tools, they come out very easy. They use a magnet system. You've got all these great little tools. You know, you've got a really good selection of them on here from uh, all to the can opener to the, uh, the file. Um, you've got a full size serrated blade. You got the scissors, which are very handy. You've got the main blade, which is a full size main blade, which is, you know, nice, a, a very nice blade. And then of course you have um, one of the things I really like is the saw. I do like having a saw on, on me at all times if I can. But man, this thing is honking heavy. Let's, let's see how much they weigh here. All right. Let's do a little scale check. We're not going to tear it today, folks, but let's put it in ounces. First, let's check the free P4. 8.6 ounces. Uh, that's pretty hefty, folks. Okay. Now, what I have been carrying uh, since the free P4 is really kind of pulling my drawers down sometimes. I have been carrying this old Skeletool CX, and this is one of the nice, I like this one because it has a 154 CM blade. Uh, but obviously, like stepping down to this um, bolster, you know, you're gonna, you're losing a lot of the features that are in the free P4, the same as you would carrying anything. You know, basically you have a pliers, wire cutters, and you have a screwdriver. That's what you get. That's what you get in this one. You uh, you ain't got a can opener. You don't have a wire stripper. You don't have a small blade. You don't have a file, none of that good stuff. You do have a little carabiner though with a bottle opener on it if you need it. But let's see what this thing weighs. Five ounces on the button. And we'll check the new one, the bolster we're talking about here. Six ounces on the button. So saving two ounces. Actually, 2.6 ounces, 8.6 for the free P4, and then 6 ounces for the for the bolster. You know what? Let's take this scale off this cushion. Make sure make sure that thing's not interfering with stuff. Just to just to make sure we're all fair. Six ounces, 8.6, five ounces. So. When I'm carrying this one, because this one's too heavy, I always feel like I'm missing out on some stuff. And there's been a couple of times where I wish I had this one for whatever tool or something like that. So my thoughts are I'll try carrying this one for a while, and maybe it'll be a nice uh, a nice little fit. You know, something that uh, that will help to, uh, to fill a void. I like that you can access the main blade with, uh, you know, with with the tool staying closed it's a big plus everything else you know it will be accessed like normal yep i'm not for sure what i think about those spring-loaded pliers i have to let you all know on that um i don't know if there's a way to disable that if a person doesn't like it i doubt there is because it's probably built in here but yeah We'll give it a try. Uh, I might post a follow up here. Oh, I don't know. Give me about six months or a year or something like that of carrying it, you know, before I can give you really good feedback on it. But uh, if y'all have any questions in the meantime, you know, as always, just drop them in here in this video. I try to answer all my comments. Sometimes I'll answer uh, two, twice in a week, and sometimes I'll answer two or three times in a day. It just depends on the number of call comments coming in and how, how busy I am and all that good stuff and everything. But yeah, uh, let me know any questions. Let me know what you think of this video. Uh, Y'all don't forget to click that like button. It really helps me out and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay safe out there. Everybody have a great day. The fitment in the sheath for this item. So um, let me see, how would we prefer to carry this? Probably tip down on your waist. Uh, normally on my waist, I would prefer to carry it. I'm right-handed on my right waist and pull it out where I can get access to the blade. So that would be in this situation right here, okay? A little tight, like most of them new. But I can tell you this sheath is not custom made for it because look, we've got a you know pretty good gap at the bottom of it. Now as this gets used and it gets beat up and stuff like that, it'll loosen up and everything. But it's not going to get to the point where it'll be too loose, you know, and, and fall out or anything like that. Just know that it's going to be broken in a little bit. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't know, and this is what I use this for, 
a lot of people complain, well, why does the sheath like this down here in the bottom? Well, in these nylon sheaths, that's when it's on your belt, trying to fish this out, you reach in here with your thumb or your index finger in the bottom and you push it up and then you reach up in here and grab a hold of it a lot easier. That's what I use it for anyway. So yeah, uh, it looks like it fits pretty decent in the sheath. Uh, you might be able to repurpose this and use it for some of your other Leathermans or whatnot because it looks like, like I said, there's uh, there's plenty of room on it. Let's look at that Skeletal in it just for giggles and see what it does. Yeah, see, Skeletal fits in there fine. Skeletal is the easy one to retract to because you can just grab a hold of this part and take it out of the sheath. The P4 is gonna be too big. Well, you could jam it in there. Yeah, there you go. See, the, the P4 does fit in it too, it looks like. And then easy to grab out. So yeah, this is a uh, yeah, nice little sheath. It's good. So again, uh, almost forgot to put this in there. Just wanted to drop it in. Take care, y'all.